If you looked at the electron transport chains in, in chloroplasts, which is where all the chlorophyll is, that's where all the, the light energy of the sun is captured. There's a lot of iron containing systems that are present inside of the chloroplasts. And then also same thing with the mitochondria. And they're kind of in the business of uh, running a relay race. They're passing the baton, but the baton here in this case is an electron that keeps flowing through the system. And really what they're trying to do is make sure that the electrons are flowing downstream to the right acceptors. And this is based on feedback loops that are coming in, like the redox status of the plants. Um, are they too stressed? If so, then maybe some of that reduction power needs to get funneled towards antioxidants and antioxidant defense systems that can be built back up to deal with the appropriate levels of stress. And then the plants will modulate the flow almost like a variable uh, valve, if you will, that kind of dictates where the flow of this power goes. So iron is very, very important in that. And because it's involved directly in electron transport, iron becomes very critical to uh, account for when you're doing something like increasing light intensity. Or if you're growing outdoors, you know, the transition between spring and summertime is typically marked by higher light intensity. The sun gets more direct, it stays uh, out for longer, and the, the intensity is a little bit higher. So in those kinds of conditions, the plants may ultimately end up benefiting from an increase of iron by just a little bit. Uh, maybe one or two ppms, two to three ppms. Usually 10 to 15 ppms in total of iron ends up being good enough for most crops. You can go up to 15 or 20 for some other ones, but really anything above 20 doesn't really seem to have a, a huge benefit. Uh, either in a controlled environment ag, if you're you know growing giant tomatoes in a greenhouse and they're 50 feet tall, or if you're just growing outdoors, you've got some you know relatively short plants like some sage and rosemary, and so on and so forth. Uh, somewhere between 10 and 20 seems to be the sweet spot. And because it's involved in electron transport, we want to make sure that the um, amount of iron is always is always going to be available for the plants. Because if we run into iron deficiencies, what we end up seeing is that the plants become a little bit less productive initially. The electrons just don't flow as well, or they don't flow as fast. The plants seem to not be as energized. It almost seems like they're maybe sluggish a little bit. So in that case, it might be a good idea to either do a leaf tissue test, or if you kind of know more or less that the plant might be bumping into an iron deficiency, doing foliar sprays is a really good way to correct it, or putting it in the soil is also a really, really good way to correct it.